guys, welcome back to the channel Daughter of Increase. My name is Nays Denise for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. I am back. Another Bible review. I know I have tons of Bibles that I want to review for you guys and share with you guys. So I am doing that today. This is another Bible that I was sent for review through Thomas Nelson from their book look bloggers I think it is the website where you basically can request Bibles and books for free Bible studies and devotionals for free and you require it to write a review and post it on Amazon christianbook.com and or your blog so here is this one now I know I just did one on the I think it was a new King James spirit filled Bible which is like my new favorite study Bible ever but um we have this one and this one, I, I can't really tell you what interests me with it, besides that it was a New King James Version. I am obsessed with the NKJV. I just, I really love that translation a lot. But, um, yeah, so this Bible is called the NKJV Ancient Modern Bible. It says, One Faith Handed Down for All Saints. This is by Thomas Nelson. As we all know, I am obsessed with Thomas Nelson Bibles. And this came out October 2nd, 2018. This comes in three editions. It comes in the white hardcover, which is what I have, which you'll see shortly. It comes in a leather brown, and then it comes in a gray cloth um, kind of style. And what else can I say about it? I think that's pretty much all that I can say about it right now. Um, because I'm going to walk through this Bible with you. So, I have my Bible. This, the, do they have the price on here? Yes, oh, it retails for $49.99. Um, it's considered a study Bible. I do not consider this a study Bible, and I'll explain why. But, um, yeah, this is just the box, and this comes in their new easy-to-read comfort, comfort print text, which I think is a 9-point type font. I'm not sure. But um, this has full color designs that are uniquely blend, basically that uniquely blend modern typography and layout with traditional elements. It has Bible commentary from lots of people. There are biographies of notable church leaders, sacred arts, and yeah, it's an eight and a half point font. So that's what it is. Eight and a half point print size type fonts, and um, it comes in this gift box. So. Here's the front of the box. So on the side, you just have the Ancient Modern Bible, NKGV, Thomas Nelson House. And then on this side, you have the spine of the Bible with the two ribbon bookmarks. So sliding it out, you automatically get the back of the box. The, I'm sorry, the back of the Bible. Um, so it looks like that. And you guys know my Bible reviews are semi-organized, semi-not, so bear with me. But um, And pay this glare no mind. I just wanted the light for extra... I don't know extra you know brightness but um like i said ancient modern bible new king james version this is the white hardcover again you can get the gray cloth over um edition or you can get the brown leather i really do like this white with the gold and the black it's really nice um and i really just like that design so it's fairly simple it's a nice bible with the isb and on the back but Let's dive in. So I do have things marked off to show you guys. So here is your presentation page. It is really nice with this gold metallic kind of um, th presentation page. and says this Bible belongs to. The pages on this, I will say, are really thin. <laughs> um, so I would say use a regular pen. NKJV, Ancient Modern Bible, title page. The general editor is Jeremy Boma. You get into your table of contents with your Old Testament, then your New Testament, and then your supplemental articles and stuff like that. So then you have your introduction of the Bible. And the Bible basically has commentaries, which are like verse by verse or passage by passage comments from various uh, teachers and thinkers. You have book introductions. You have biographies of different men and women that uh, were transformed by the gospel. You have essays covering different topics, which I'll show you guys. Um, you have creeds of the church and sacred arts, which is in the back. And then you get your preface to the NKJV. 
I'm probably going to end up editing the lighting anyway in the video um, when I go to edit this video. So you get your basics there. So then you have your Old Testament. And then right off the back, like I said, you do get your kind of like introduction to the book of the Bible. So it's a two-page spread up here. You get your basics of the author, audience, date, purpose, and themes. And then you get like more into and like more into it. So like, what's it for? What it's about? Some stuff about it. And I mean, it it never really goes into specific order, kind of like a study Bible where it gives you like more in depth information of each of these. It's just kind of there. You have a two page introduction of the book, and it says the first book of Moses called Genesis. And then we get into the text of the Bible. So as you guys can see, it is in that same style of the journaling Bible where it's a paragraph story style. And then you get, I don't even know how much margin space this is. So let's see. Let's do centimeters first. It's about almost five and a half centimeters of space for writing. And then we have just about two and a quarter inches of, of writing space so you do get space to journal but majority of it will have commentary and when I say commentary I mean like this and I'm going to bring this up quickly so this one is by Johannes Brenz and it's for verses 31 all the way to 27 and then this one is from chapter 2 verse 8 to 20 and it's written by Eugene Peterson, which I do know who he is because he has a bunch of like coloring Bible studies out. So all of the commentaries are written by different people who are prominent or well known in um, the gospel. You get your footnotes at the bottom like that. And that's pretty much how it goes throughout um, the Bible. Your titles are written in sort of like gold fonts trying to find a page that doesn't have a lot of commentary so you can see like the blank spaces but as you can see the commentary goes a lot so this is not I don't consider this a study Bible I consider this more so a commentary Bible kind of like I don't even know what the last Bible I think the last Bible I reviewed was the story of redemption Bible and I told you guys that was more of like a commentary Bible this is how I look at this one as a commentary Bible so let's move along so then, like I said, there are articles about various people throughout. Um, you just have to flip through and find them. Let me get this to autofocus so it's not doing too much. So this one is on John Calvin. It's the Hero Reformed, sorry, Hero of Reformed Theology from 1509 to 1564. And it gives you some information about him and then some of his important works that he's done. So I like that. And here is the first bookmark. I like that these are wide bookmarks ribbon bookmarks they're wide and they're set and I really like that so here you can see you have more space for your note taking which is great um you guys know I'm all about the journaling bibles I'm into those it just allows me to take my notes and write down everything and the fact that you get space on top of commentary works you can always tape or washi tape some paper in here and write your notes you can glue or stick some paper in between i've done a video on that but um i think this is a great bible so i skipped uh, a point but here's another one you have one on john knox the father of scottish protestantism <laughs> i think that's how you say that moving along so here we go, like in the psalm, I'm sorry, this is Nehemiah, you have all of this space, just all of this space. You can do your artwork, of course, but I'm more into the Bible journaling that's more of like the note taking. That's just the type of Bible journaling I prefer to do instead of the RT one. But if you are into the artistic side, I think this would also be great as a Bible just to, you know, write your notes. As you can see, Charles Bergen is here, so he has some notes for Nehemiah. Um, so here you have one on C.S. Lewis. And C.S. Lewis is one that I really want to read about a lot. Um, an atheist turned mere Christian. Some of his, his works. And I do own a lot of his works. I know about the Chronicles of Narnia. I mean, what kid doesn't know about the Chronicles of Narnia? But um, I do want to start reading a lot more of his work. His work and A.W. Tozer's work, I really do want to read a lot more on. 
But, um, you know, this, this is the Bible. I mean, there's not much to say about it because it's not like a hefty Bible. Again, here's your introduction to page spread. This one is on the book of Isaiah, and this is what you get. And I really like how it has that ancient vibe with the sort of Victorian. I don't, it's not Victorian, but I'm thinking Victorian in my mind. But you guys get what I'm saying with this font. That's what I get from this. So you get lots of different his Charles Bergen. Again, you have Jerome, you have Origin. I don't even know who that is. I don't even know who half these people are. But the the writing space is all that I'm about right now. Um, so flipping here, here is the second bookmark ribbon. Again, these are really, they feel really nice and lovely. The New Testament we are into. And again, your Matthew with a uh, two-page spread on it. Here is an article. This is on Francis of Assisi, Saint of Poverty. I don't know who half these people are, so if you ask me, I really wouldn't be able to tell you. Um, unfortunately, this is not red letter text. You guys know how I feel about red letter text. I'm a, I love red letter text, but this is not red letter text, unfortunately. But that's okay. Um, I think I did some markings in John, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I always had to show you John because that's what we're studying. <laughs> so here is John, the two-page uh, information on it. I think I took some. Yeah, I did some um, underlining here when I was doing my my notes for John 5. Actually, I didn't even include these, so I probably should go back and include these <laughs> in my John 5 notes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, you know, a regular pen doesn't seem to bleed through but you can see it a little bit there is a slight ghosting but I mean it's really thin paper it feels great though like it's thin but the paper quality actually feels good um, I'm not sure what was next here's one here William Tyndall and I mean Tyndall is the guy that makes the NLT if I'm not mistaken <laughs> translation so yeah Then we get into your supplement, supplemental articles. So you have Creation and Fall by Daniel Mars. Meditating on His Word by Timothy Keller. Some of these people I've had heard, I've had, I have heard of, oh gosh, talking is still a bit of a problem for me. You have The Church by Gerald Bray. And I love reading these articles, The Doctrine of the Church. I like that. That's a few pages long. Um, Salvation and Union with Christ by Daniel Mars. Again, I cannot wait to dive into these articles. Oh, gosh. The Trinity by Fred Sanders. And that's two pages. What the Whole World is Waiting for by N.T. Wright. The Marriage of Heaven and Earth, that seems great. Then we get into the creeds of the church. The Apostles' Creed, which I did hear before. Heard that quite often. The Nicene Creed, I don't know anything about that. Um, so yeah, if you, if you do, let me know. I'm not even going to uh, attempt to pronounce that, but yeah. Here's another creed. I mean, it has a good amount of creeds. And you have your sources, um, ancient and modern, where they get a lot of their information from. Then you get some reading plans. So here's one for celebrating Advent that starts in November. Here's the reading for Lent and Easter. Moving along, it's not, not going to be a long video because it's not a lot to this Bible, but I do like the Bible. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that word because I don't know. Um, but then we get into the art of the church. And this is where you can find the sacred art, as they call it. And um, 
you know, there are just lots of images and some actual artwork throughout, which I really like. It adds to the Bible. It gives it something extra. It's supposed to be the Apostle Paul. I do want to show you guys these pages because they're really nice. This is nice. It's our babble. It's an oil painting. Another oil painting. So, so you'll see statues. You'll see some um, remnants of like buildings and things like that. Another oil painting. This is supposed to be a uh, depiction of the return of the prodigal, prodigal son. The death of Abel. Death, where is thy sting? So I think this is like a water painting because it says water tempera on paper right here. So kind of like, not watercolor, but sort of kind of. This was done with mineral pigments. And then you get into your mats after that, which you have the world of the patriarchs, Exodus, oh sorry, you can't even see that, <laughs> Exodus and conquest of Canaan, land of the 12 tribes, kingdom of David and Solomon, Jesus' ministry, Paul's missionary journeys, and then they're done with 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and his trip to Rome. And the last one is Christianity spread in the first and second centuries. So, um, do I think this is an essential Bible? No, I don't. Um, it's not a study Bible, but it has some very good commentary. I've read through some of the commentary um, already through John, and I loved it. Um, a lot of great people like Charles Spurgeon. Tyndall and uh, I think A.W. Tozer's in here, Matthew Henry, which I know who he is because I do read some of his commentaries. Um, so I don't know everyone throughout here. I'm not going to say that I do because I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm always flipping to Matthew Henry, <laughs> like Matthew Henry, Matthew Henry, Matthew Henry. Uh, yeah, so that's funny. Augustine here. Martin Luther. So, like, some of these people I definitely have heard of. But a lot of them I don't know. But, um, is this an essential Bible? Like I said, it's really not an essential Bible. But it's a good one to have if you can afford to get it. Um, and when I say afford, I don't mean money-wise. I mean, if you feel like you need another type of Bible that has more resources that you would need when you're studying the Word of God, then yes, I have so many Bibles, but I utilize every last Bible for when I'm studying because I like to make sure that I understand the Word. And um, I always make sure when I'm reading these commentaries and like study notes in the Bibles that I'm getting my personal understanding from reading the text, then reading the commentary and seeing if it aligns with my thoughts. And if it doesn't align, that's when I start to pull out other Bibles that I have that are study Bibles with other commentaries and see where I may have um, misstepped in my interpretation or where their interpretation interpretation doesn't make sense to me and it will once I check other Bibles that I own. But um, I have come to realize that Thomas Nelson, for me personally, I don't know about you guys, but for me, their commentary, their study notes have always been very helpful. I have never found anything wrong with them, and I always do my research. Like, I Google, look in the scriptures, all that. So, um, I definitely say that Thomas Nelson is reliable, and I think this is a good one to have. It's not a necessity, though, but it's a good one to have if you want something extra. It's kind of like I said with the ESV Story of Redemption Bible from Crossway. It's kind of a, a commentary Bible. Um, there's no study notes, but I do like that there's journaling space to write my own personal notes, which I'm always for. I love that paragraph kind of style. Um, I like this, like, paragraph style. That's my thing. I feel like it flows better instead of the two-column style. But, um, you know, it, it really depends on you. Me, personally, I do like it. Would I, would I have paid for this outside of not having gotten it for review? 
possibly it would not have been like on my top five list <laughs> but i definitely would have seen me um purchasing this down the line if it was ever on sale now you can get this for 28.99 i believe on christianbook.com and this specific design which is the um hardcover in white and i really like the white it's just it's very crisp um it makes me nervous because it's white but it's it's very nice um trying to get this in here I don't want these standing out so let's try to do this in a orderly fashion see it's hard to get these bookmarks in sometimes because sometimes they just don't want to cooperate but you're gonna cooperate today okay but yeah um, do I like this Bible I do do I find it useful I do is it a necessity no if you have the funds if you feel like you want something extra to throw in your Bible collection something that you will learn something from because I definitely have read through the commentary and like I said the commentary is great um, I'm not sure about the introductions of the books of the Bible yet because I haven't really read through those yet but I will today um, but it's a good Bible to have um, if I had to rate this I guess one out of five on um, necessity I would probably say maybe a three it's one of those that um, if you buy it it's good and if you don't it's okay it's not a necessity <laughs> but again um, I do want to thank Thomas Nelson for sending me this for review I really truly appreciate it they have been amazing <laughs> with providing me with bibles um for review and again these are programs that i have mentioned before and i'm going to do a separate video on the programs and setting up a blog and everything for you guys to see the step-by-step -step way to do it but um yeah all the links will be down below to amazon as well as christianbook.com and possibly lifeway if i can find it on lifeway but um that is pretty much it for this bible check it out if you are interested and i'll see you guys in the next video